Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a market update for Monday, uh, December 10th, 2018. I posted uh, these charts in the pre-market session today on Right Side of the Chart, uh, some developments that I noticed uh, on the futures. And uh, what that was is last night we had uh, the futures down uh, pretty good at one point, down, I, I, if I recall, about almost 1% or so on the NASDAQ 100 and QE minis. That's what we're looking at here on a 60-minute chart. And I noticed some, you know, the potential divergences. Now, I had highlighted those divergences last week. And what I was referring to is right here. We had a divergent low. Uh, had a couple levels that were highlighted recently as well. And uh, then last night, uh, what happened is that we reversed. Uh, wasn't a very strong reversal, relatively speaking, but we, we, we didn't continue lower. And had we continued lower, we would have taken out or negated these uh, negative divergences. But what happened instead is they were confirmed. By confirmed, uh, you know, my book, when the indicators are still heading down as they were as we headed into the end of the week, uh, that's the momentum is down, you can take out the divergences. So there's a lot of points in time where you have potential divergences in the charts, but those divergences are taken out. By taken out, that means the indicators have now made, you know, they've taken out the previous lows, um, whereas prices made lower lows as well. So we had confirmed divergences, and then we rallied this morning. It's been volatile all morning, but uh, I made mention in the trading room today as well, after I followed up with that post, that I expect a green day today. Uh, I'm leaning that way slightly. It's still anybody's game, but let me share my thoughts. Um the, the futures were down pretty good, as I said last night. Nothing huge, but down a percent or so. And by all accounts, it was the bear. The bears had uh, had the ball in their court. And uh, they, they failed to capitalize on that for whatever reason, whether it was just natural selling and buying, buying and selling forces, supply, demand, whether it's some government intervention, it doesn't matter. All that matters is those divergences were confirmed. And if you followed me for a while, you know I put a, a pretty big weighting. Divergences are not the be-all, end-all. They're not a guarantee of a rally. But when I get them, especially on a 60-minute time frame or a daily time frame, they, they, they give me pause, uh, if I'm short, that is. And, you know, I went in short, uh, went home short on the weekend, into the weekend, covered that short this morning, as I said, reverse that to a long. Uh, because of these divergences and because of the, the fact that they, the, the bears were not able to take that down last night, to keep in mind, they still may very easily. There's still we're in a very precarious technical posture right now. I'll go over some things. The SPY is down uh, S&P 500 uh, quite a bit more than the Nasdaq 100. So what we're seeing is broad space selling, market det breadth deterioration or uh, sector deterioration. Financials are getting hit hard today. Another big day down in energy. Um, but with that being said, here's here's what I'm looking at, and I'll let you make the you know decision as to how you want to be positioned on the nasdaq 100 we have uh, almost three equal lows effectively we have this low back here in late uh, october then we came in uh tested this level quite a bit 65 17 pretty important level there were a few pops below there but that's about where trading normalized and so far we've come in a little bit higher um, and as I mentioned, the trend in the NASDAQ 100, these are the futures, of course, has been more of a, a, a slightly downward sloping price channel. I have that as a, on the S&P 500, which I'll get to in a second, uh, pretty much a, a rectangular box, a sideways trading range, whereas we have a slightly downward sloping range here. And so far, we've uh, reversed uh, a little shy of that previous low. Again, the day is young. The week has just started. Uh, we popped right into resistance today so far. So this may just be a, um, you know, a little fleeting bounce. Maybe traders are reacting to these divergences and we turn back down here soon and we undercut the lows. So what you need to watch for today, of course, would be a break of, uh, you know, and this isn't a hard line, but uh, 65, seven, uh, about 65.18 actually rounded up. Um, and then there are some some previous reaction lows there. So let's watch these lows. If that gets taken out, a uh, couple things I'd be looking for. If we do thrust down uh, and we come in and undercut these recent lows, the, if the divergences are negated, meaning taken out, that would 
pretty it'd be pretty bearish i can just tell you that and probably open the door for that washout move we do not have bullish divergences on the spy or qqq 60 minute chart remember these futures trade virtually around the clock so you're going to have some different uh you know trend lines and developments and divergences that you don't see on the qqq and spy which are showing regular session trades uh so that's that's one potential scenario um but i'll tell you as of today uh, and I said I flip-flopped, reversed um, from this morning from short to long um, because of the fact that the, they couldn't take it down, the overnight session, couldn't gap it down big today. Um, I'm looking at uh, a possible rally today. And here's the thing. If we get the rally today, uh, and it's, I think, number one, I think today, however we close, we'll probably close either down pretty big. I'm talking 2 3% or more maybe, or up very big two three percent or more and i'm leaning towards that up close i don't think they're just going to park it here that's certainly possible i'm just making a micro call remember uh, making micro calls on the market where we go today in the next hour two hours that can be a fool's errand but I, you know that's what i like to do and and my thoughts are looking at the headlines last week and over the weekend uh, just one record after another. These are not all-time records, but we're talking multi-year, even multi-decade records. Worst week since blah, 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 I think 28, uh, 2008. Uh, worst November since 2008. Something went back all the way to 1929 as far as one of the worst, whatever they were. There's all kinds of records that, I, you know, stuff means something to me, certainly. But more importantly, what I think the takeaway is, uh, that was very bearish market action. Um, I have to imagine it had quite a few longs capitulate last week, throw in the towel, um, probably sucked in sh some shorts. And um, if that is the case, and again, if we can rally, and this is all a contingent scenario here, um, we need to get up there. I think the more we rally, uh, let's just, you can see targets up here, but let me just give you preferred scenario right now if we start to rally today and we can get above today's earlier high probably run all the way up here um, uh, not maybe not in one day but this week uh, to up about up to just below that level there that's 68 67 to call it about 68 55 that's a pretty significant resistance zone and if that were to happen that would do a couple things would happen. It would mean that these, you know, again, the bears dropped the ball here, had the chance to take it down and didn't. It would put in a pretty big uh, green bullish stick. It would also mean a roughly triple bottom low in the uh, NASDAQ 100. Uh, again, I don't see those very often during corrections, but hey, the most important thing is double bottom, triple bottom, doesn't matter. Support is support and tone less broken. And that's why I'm doing this video. We are at, the markets are at support with bullish divergence, at least on the futures here on the 60 minute time frames. I'm going to get to QQQ in a second. I want to get this video out as quick as possible. Um, let me look at uh, ES before we go there, uh, before we move on to QQQ. Uh, these are the S&P 500 e-mini futures. You can see up here, ES, 60 minute chart and same story. So this is the bigger picture. I talked about the sideways trading range. I've showed that before. This is how you box it in. We have three roughly equal highs at the top and three roughly equal lows. Now, actually, let me redo this for you. Um, I like to draw it this way. This is roughly what I'm looking at here. Now, why is that? Well, back here in late October, we spiked through there on a selling climax. This is what you call selling climax, a big candle with a big reversal. Usually I don't have the volume turned on here, high volume. Um, but this is where trading normalized right there on that line, about 26.25. We had a spike below, and again, that was a selling climax that led the way to a big rally. Uh, we came back down, tested that 26.25 level again. We tested actually on, on several occasions, held it, and we had a nice rally. Uh, we came down again recently, hit it, rallied pretty good, uh, and then put in a small divergent high here. That was that pop into Monday's high last after the G20 summit. Came back down. So now what I'm looking at today is a possible bear trap, and this is why I'm thinking that uh, there's a potential here for a pretty significant rally that could carry us into the end of the year even, a Christmas rally, Santa rally, whatever you want to call it. Why? Well, we had that flush out move. This was, you know, up to this point, again, for the reasons I just said, I think that level was defined as pretty much the key support level. We flushed it out in the futures, took it out last night, yet we managed to regain it. 
Uh, so that in itself is a bear trap, a breakdown or a false breakdown. We recovered. This morning we got snap, smacked down again right after the open. That's why I wanted to wait to get this video out. I posted quite a few charts and some thoughts and commentary on the right side of the chart on the home page as well as in the trading room. But uh, so what happened, we went down again, um, but we still have divergence. You can see here on ES and the S&P 500 futures, pretty strong divergence that is. Uh, and we're back testing that level from below right now. So if you want to look at it this way, this is pretty much the line in the sand low. I'll have to give you a level there, but uh, you can see pretty much today's lows. Just keep it simple, whether you're trading SPY or ES. Um, and again, it's no notable that the... Um, the uh, S&P 500 is down quite a bit more than uh, NQ today or QQQ. Uh, and I said this last week, it appears to me that uh, that tech trade, the big fang trade, is pretty much washed out. Uh, what we're seeing now is the financials and energy and other sectors moving down recently. But I think that the uh, downside here is pretty uh, pretty limited. And I know I also want to say this, uh, you know, I reverse today and I'll stay long until unless we take out these lows or I see anything else in the chart that convinced me, uh, maybe give it a little bit there. I'll, I'll have to watch and see how things play out. But uh, I think the risk reward is really good um, because risk reward, you know, I know the market action's awful. The charts look horrible daily and weekly charts. But again, we're at support. And the way you look at it is if you go long here and, you know, if I'm doing the video, we bounced a little bit. We're still right off the lows uh, with a stop not too far below. Uh, let's say we do get that Christmas rally, a short squeeze, short covering rally. Uh, again, there was the headlines last week and the, don't get me wrong and the, and the market action, very bearish. But that, again, may have washed out uh, a lot of weak-handed longs, may have sucked in enough shorts now uh, that we could get a squeeze. And so if you look at, you know, again, from risk-reward, let's just say, hypothetically, we're going to go test the top of this channel again. I'm not calling for that now. I'll give price targets on the site or in another video. But um, at the very least, maybe we come up, test the 50 or 200-day moving average again. So you're looking at a, a small unit of loss if stopped out below the recent today's lows to uh you know several times that in profit potential um again if we happen to rally uh this week maybe into the you know maybe possibly into the end of the year here um beyond what we'll see it's way too early to try to gauge how far if anything again by the time this video hits the press you know it gets uploaded to youtube process and you're watching it we may have already undercut those lows, and I may already be uh, out of that uh, long and back short again. Uh, so uh, these are just levels to watch. It's a fast-moving market. Uh, so as I always say, the uh, charts are dynamic, and so is my analysis. You know, went home short and bearish on Friday and uh, reversed that to long and bullish this morning. And, uh, and I may be, again, by the time you watch this video, I may be short and bearish, looking for that final flush-out move to test uh, the lows from earlier in the year that, a lot of people are looking for the uh, March and uh, April lows. So before we move off this chart, again, just, uh, you know, try to keep a, you know, forget about what you think the market may or may not do. I'm just looking at objectively. I see the third divergent low, a roughly equal low. So that makes it a divergent low on the 60 minute chart at support. And we know what happened the last few times we, we got there as well. Uh, so. Uh, anything is possible. And again, I'm looking at purely from a risk reward perspective and, and market action more so. I factor that in again, the fact that the, the bears had the bulls on the ropes. I'm speaking meta metaphorically speaking, of course, you know, supply, demand, dynamics of the market. They had the bulls on the ropes last night, failed to capitalize that. Again, after the smackdown this morning so far, uh, let's get to the uh, index charts. We had that smackdown this morning. Uh, let's look at that real quick. Uh, so even worse than SPY. Here's a one minute chart. Uh, we opened up uh, at the open. You know, this is not showing the after hour trades or the futures, just the regular session. We went down sharply. Uh, they could have built on those gains and they still may, but they didn't so far. They've been buying that gap back up. Uh, SPY is still negative as I'm doing this video, which gives you know, plenty of time if you did want to go long. Again, I have to say it's very aggressive. If you don't know what to do and you're not sure if my flip-flopping from bullish to bearish, you know, spinning your head, 
um, I will say this, the best trade is stand aside, wait for the charts to firm up. Um, you know, if we happen to put in a big bullish green stick today, great. There's probably plenty of upside, uh, or there may be in the coming weeks, um, to go long then, or maybe start scaling in. Likewise, if we reverse today, something looks like we're getting a nice rally, even the, you know, spy turns positive and all of a sudden they dump it. They take out the lows. I just showed you we're pretty flirting with some pretty critical support levels. Well, not sure you have to be a, an active a pretty nimble trader to short there because i really don't think the downside is that far in percentage terms two to five percent is my best guess and uh, i like futures because you can have your stops hit around the clock but not everybody trades futures see with the uh, spy and qqq you're prone to big opening gaps so there's spy just showing you again a one minute chart what it looks like today and here's qqq you know outperforming again i think we saw that at the end of last week uh we had a little brief uh spike down today this was yesterday's close so up down but so far we're positive and uh let me just get to the uh, daily charts i'll wrap this up because i do want to get the video out to you guys um i have a lot of different boards uh you can see if i move this over these are all you know a total of nine different boards on uh, spy or any of my charts, really. Uh, this is QQQ, I'm sorry. But this is a level I've had for a while here, about 160, 70. It's a pretty decent support level. Let me, let me give you a different board, a clean board. Here we go. So what you can see is uh, three roughly equal lows. Obviously, that second low was, was uh, deeper. But uh, here's another low. I don't want to call this an inverse head and shoulders pattern. I'm sure some will, uh, because inverse head and shoulders patterns patterns are bottoming patterns. They come at the end of a prolonged downtrend. They're not continuation patterns. They don't come right after a correction, but it doesn't matter. Take it for what it is. And that is, uh, you know, the index making three roughly equal lows. Um, like I said, there was bullish divergence recently, and uh, I showed you the bullish divergence on the 60 minute charts. This looks ugly. Like I said, there's a lot of ugliness in the charts right now. So maybe we do get that final washout move. Uh, we'll just have to see what happens today. I just want to point out the potential if we don't, because sometimes things, you know, there's an old expression, it always looks darkest just before the dawn. Sometimes the charts look like death. Uh, looks like we're going a lot lower, and that's right when things bottom. And that's because when the last of the longs, weak-handed longs have sold or capitulated, sold their shares, you don't have a lot of sellers waiting on the sidelines because the signature of this this correction so far has been uh, all these bounces just as it looks starts to look to get good they get sold into and they get sold into aggressively so there have been a lot of sellers trap longs waiting to get out and maybe once those weak hands are, are shaken out maybe once the hedge funds or more so the pension funds pension plans have have reallocated their portfolios i talked about that quite a bit in recent months uh how the hedge uh, pension funds were uh, in my opinion um exposed to a tremendous amount of risk because their, their asset allocation models were no longer working there's been a lot of articles everything i predicted you know weeks ago and months ago we're talking about now barons wall street journal they're all coming out saying cash is king cash is king all asset classes are dropping um you know that's something we talked about so what happened is I think the, as I said, the, uh, the especially the big pension funds like Calpers, uh, they have to reallocate and, and 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 readjust their risk model, their exposure, their risk exposure. And to do that, what were they doing? They were the ones unloading on the rallies, unloading their equity positioning. Uh, and again, that's my guess. Calpers only, and that's just one of many. They, you know, they usually only disclose their their uh, asset allocation. I think once a year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, either way. Uh, so I think a lot of that's gone on and, um, we'll see. So that's QQQ. And again, wanted to point out potential support there. Here's spy, uh, and spy. We have that, uh, roughly triple bottom here. It is right here. Um, again, roughly triple bottom low with a lot of volatility. You get these spikes down. Remember that was very a very swift intraday move down, but this is where trading normalized on that initial leg down. We had several tests. I showed you again on the ES 60 minute chart on the futures. You could see all the tests better there. This is just a daily chart of SPY. And then once again, look where we're at. And the fact we've had another flush down move through there. So if, and again, a big if, capitalize the word if, if we can reverse here um, and put a nice big green candle, the 
the bigger and the greener, well, <laughs> I should say the bigger the better, and it's going to be one color green, um, then that gives us the potential that this was a uh, bear trap or a false breakdown today. Um, but we're still flirting on that level, so if we break it, um, that opens a door for a move down here. You have the lows back in uh, early February and the lows in early April. Uh, so that would be a lot of, you know, I'm sure a lot of eyes are looking for that level to be hit. And I already talked about this. It's you know, almost too easy. If everyone's looking for one level, we'll do one of two things. We're, we'll either reverse just shy of it, which maybe we've done now, or maybe there's a little more, or we'll cut through it. And maybe, who knows, once in a while, technical analysis, even if everyone's looking for the same thing, does play out, but rarely. So my point is, uh, a break below there could open the floodgates, give us a washout move. And that scenario that really I was talking about at the end of the week last week, that's still in play right now. It's still potentially in play. Uh, so I'm going to wrap the video up here. Uh, right now, it's a slugfest between bulls and bears. And I think we're, uh, you know... I think if we can close the day green today, uh, that can open the door for a move that could actually last, uh, you know, through this week. And if it lasts this week, if we close the week green, if we build on, if we happen to close green today, build on today's you know, gains. Oh, I should say we're I'm down. We're down right now. Close green and then build on that throughout the week. Then that would actually, I think, open the door for maybe a year end rally. It would just show that maybe the sellers are temporarily washed out. Otherwise, um, be careful here because we're still flirting with very precarious support. The charts still look, I don't want to say like, yeah, like death. They, they look, look pretty bad. They're bearish on the daily and weekly time frames. So, uh, and I think I pointed out we had that death cross last week on the um, uh, on one of the major indexes. Uh, maybe people are going to sell because of that. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. We'll see what happens. I'll do another update today. I just wanted to mention those are the levels we're watching, and I, and I don't think we'll sit here long. Uh, we could park it around these levels today, but my guess is one, you know, we'll either rally up before the close into the close today and have a solid green day with a big reversal, especially in SPY being down half a percent right now, um, or the bearish you know, technicals play out, we go on, we undercut last night lows, last night's lows, whatever happened in the overnight session was, you know, gets faded. And then uh, that could open the door for a washout move. I'll wrap it up here and I will do another update, um, at least no later than the end of the day, a closing market wrap. We'll see what happens. If anything big happens intraday, I'll, I'll post an update. And as always, I'll be active in the trading room for those of you on rightsideofthechart.com. This has been Randy Finney. Uh, have a great trading day.